You may have seen some of these cutesy depictions of wormholes where our three-dimensional space is represented by this surface which is curved through another dimension and can thereby connect two distant points on the surface. Something always bothered me about this kind of illustration because there's no way a real even theoretical wormhole could look like this if you encountered it because what's this tunnel made out of? So I figured that if you thought about a wormhole that exists in our world, which connects two points in three-dimensional space, it would have to be a sphere. And so I tried to first create the shape of this two-dimensional wormhole. And I did that by just creating a bunch of geodesic curves that lie along the surface of the hole. So we start with a set of theta values which are evenly spaced around a circle. And for each of those values, we have a curve parameterized by time in this interval. We're going to change the radial component according to this quadratic function. So it will come down to a radius r and then go back out. And as that's happening, the z component is going to go from 0 to a value l. And having those both happen simultaneously will be able to produce that shape where you have the curve come in and then go out. And then we just do this for all a bunch of different values of theta. And those will be curves that lie along the surface of the hole. And then to extend this one dimension higher, we're going to keep all of these equations and then simply add a phi coordinate where now we have um, a bunch of phi theta pairs lying on the surface of a sphere. And for each of those pairs, we're going to have, again, the row component come in and then go out. And then the z will now be the w component, which represents the position along the fourth, the fourth dimension. dimension. And so in, in three-dimensional space, this becomes our spherical wormhole. We are moving towards the surface of the sphere in three dimensions, but as you're doing that, you're being curved through this logistic function through the fourth dimension. dimension. And then when you come back away, move away from the surface of the sphere, you end up on the higher uh, hyperplane, which is W equals L. So now is the part where I try to visualize this object, which exists in four-dimensional space. I did this using MATLAB. So here we're looking at a set of trajectories, one for each theta phi pair, and I've colorized the dots by the position in the fourth dimension. So in this case I had it going from a hyperplane at w equals 0 to w equals 5. Basically it starts, you can think of approaching the sphere, you're at a blue value at a lower hyperplane, and then it comes in and just touches the surface of the sphere and then comes back out. And as it's doing that, it's moving along the W axis, so it's moving to a higher hyperplane. Did that make sense? Damn it. For this next figure, I couldn't help but see what would happen if we applied dimensionality reduction to this four-dimensional object. This is an object which is, has a in, sort of intrinsic dimensionality of three in the sense that it's like a, it's a three-dimensional surface, so to speak, that's curved through the fourth dimension in the same way that the normal depiction of the wormhole is like a two-dimensional surface which is curved through the third dimension. So we're taking this four-dimensional object, this collection of points in four dimensions, and trying to embed it in a three-dimensional space such that what we see reflects um, the original object as best as possible. And I did that using T-SNE. If you're not familiar with T-SNE, um, I promise this is cool. Now, here you can kind of see, it looks about the same, but you can see the path that a particle would take more clearly as it would approach this hole and then come out on the other side because the T-SNE kind of spread out the trajectories. So next, I thought about what would it look like if we were to actually look into this object, assuming there was something on the other side to be seen. 
here I'm just showing the result before I go into the explanation of how I arrived at this. <clears throat> so I looked at the two-dimensional case first. In this model, rays of light are going to be confined to the surface, and they're going to be moving on straight paths. And to my understanding, the straightness means that it's going to make the same angle with these grid lines at every point that it crosses. So if you have a ray of light coming in towards the hole and then going down into the hole and coming out on the other side, I assume that it will come out at the same angle that it went in um, if you're looking from an overhead view. And this is the part where if I'm mistaken about this, I need somebody to correct me. So here I'm taking an overhead view. I'm trying to use ray diagrams to depict this situation on the bottom right. So I have some infinite plane on the lower level and on the upper level uh, behind the hole and then in front of the hole we have this grid and that grid uh, is represented by the bar that's beneath the circle. And so I'm just applying this rule of having an equal angle of reflection off of the circle and looking at the image that will create on a virtual retina behind the the little eye. And you'll notice that this is actually equivalent to the geometry for a spherical mirror, where if you're looking at a spherical mirror, virtual image will appear on the sphere. If you were looking at a spherical mirror, you would see a reflection of yourself. But in this case, you are seeing what is on the other side of the wormhole. But similarly, things that are behind the hole, you're just seeing as they are. And we are positioned on the upper plane and looking directly into the hole. And the interesting thing about this object is that, so if you look at the lower plane of W equals zero, you can see from this ray diagram that you're able to see things that are both behind and in front of the hole on the lower hyperplane. Because the light rays can come from either that grid plane, come up and around and hit your eye, or they can come from that red plane behind the hole and then up through the hole and hit your eye. So this is the ultimate image that I generated which kind of simulates this for the three-dimensional case and I did this using POV ray. So that green striped backing is on our hyperplane but directly behind the sphere so we're just seeing that normally and that grid plane is directly below us quote-unquote on the lower hyperplane. The red plane is also on the lower hyperplane, but is sitting directly below the green stripes. I hope that was interesting. If anyone knows more about differential geometry and can see some mistakes that I made with this, please let me know. Goodbye.